This is courtesy of um, GQ Style, which I thought was a fairly obvious article but i guess now the fashion industry is finally waking up to the realities of the normal world that we live in and they've kind of decided or kind of finally woken up to the fact that these hallowed institutions like fashion schools and stuff are not as necessary or as important as they once believed it to be in terms of making or creating or providing the platform for the next big great fashion superstar and most kids especially when starting enough their brands on instagram have a basically higher possibility of maybe ending up being the creator director of these hallowed studios or hallowed fashion houses more so than people that come out of conventional university because they've actually practiced the skill of actually becoming an entrepreneur becoming a business person supplying their wares to various different shops and whatnot running a studio all these kind of things that basically they don't really teach you in uni where they basically prioritize or they basically tell you your dream should be to go out there get an internship working for a big house and then slowly but surely make your way through the industry that way and then maybe at the end of it you may be able to launch your own brand but now these new kids coming up are just completely jumping over all those steps they're following the lead of something like a Virgil something like a Matthew Williams there's even someone to a extent of like a Heron Preston who I mentioned a lot because I've I, I, I met him a few times back in the day when he used to have his blog early early on I think maybe 2005 ish times I don't really remember but he was never really a fashion guy he was maybe a, a ideas kind of cool design sort of dude maybe in a similar sort of guy so like a Tom Sachs right you never don't you don't really think of Tom Sachs as a as a fashion dude but you definitely think if he was able to give him a um the key to a studio he could put together a pretty decent collection and obviously Heron Preston has great ideas he appreciates he approaches um things in a really fresh innovative innovative way but even what he's doing in fashion should be an eye-opener to some kids because again he's not a quintessential fashion dude but he's able to absolutely smash it and if anything i would say i would argue out of the three in that kind of group of the bin chill boys of him matthew williams and obviously virgil i think heron preston might have the most impressive brand especially considering again he doesn't have a conventional fashion background and i think a lot of the kids are seeing people like that and thinking you know what he's stocked in all the stores i want to be stocked in he has an amazing fashion week show that he puts on every season i want to emulate that i'm going to just do what he does do you know what I mean? and just start my own brand and start saying direct to market and hopefully down the line you can maybe link up with new guards group and you know you can production could be handled that way and you could maybe get blow up that way and do collaborations duh, 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 duh. but it all starts from that kind of building your brand and having you know scores of people and fans that like what you do and then have them basically preach the gospel of your brand to others and you can kind of acquiesce that way and this article from gq touches upon it and basically puts into print which basically solidifies the thing and people will probably listen to this more so listen to me so let's read the article it says um the title is what um, want to make it in fashion build fanatics it's written by a lady called rachel tashian and um, who i follow on, in, on twitter she's a fairly decent follower in there so definitely check her out i'll put the link in the twitter description sorry in my description if you want to check it so the article starts as follows it seems like everyone with a foot in fashion has a award this year uh, has an award these days but the crown jewel and the indisputable is still the lvmh prize which the conglomerate awards annually to top up coming um, to top up and coming uh, uh, to up and coming designers with the level of ceremony that is tantamount to an uh, anointment. The jury that had that has a record of spotting stars, Grace Wallace Bonner, Marion Sir, Hood by Air, Jack Moose are all past winners. And it's not just a trophy. The 300,000 euros for the grand prize winner plus a year's mentorship from LVMH have helped form a new generation of icons in an industry that can be unsparing to young talent. The winners of this year's new edition were announced on Tuesday morning, 27-year-old Nessin Joker, an Albanian women's wear designer in London, took home the grand prize. The Carl Lagerfeld Prize, a special prize renamed for the late Chanel design in 2019 was shared by three winners the American designer Colm Dillon um, the design um, the, who designed streetwearish women's and men under the name Kid Super um, Lukuyano Dingi um, a South African designer of a graceful men's and women's clothes and Ruth Ruby Zhu a Shanghai based designer of freaky genderless experiments of knitwear um, it continues here. You see, obviously, some examples of their past work. Obviously, it's pretty decent. Um, the Lagerfeld winners described being somewhat starstruck by the LVMH designers who serve as a grand prize jury. Kim Jones, Mark Jacobs, Virgil Abloh, and Jonathan Anderson. Lagerfeld may be one of the most legendary names in fashion, but for today's 20-something hopefuls, it's the crop of these designers who are the icons, especially because of well, especially because of the way that Jacobs and, and, and Abloh misshaped streetwear, pop culture, and high fashion at Louis Vuitton. Jacobs was a creative director of the house from 1970s 
and 2014 when asked how success might look different today than it did for designers of Jacob's generation or Lagerfeld the designers pointed out resolutely to a shift in the balance of power away from the establishment blessing and towards a fanatical fan base which has always been the case that's what I've always argued whenever when it was obviously poised that Virgil was going to be the head of Louis Vuitton men's people were scoffing oh he shouldn't do it he's crap he's shit I don't like his design he copies he copies but the fact of the matter was he built such a following at Off-White and with all these collaborations that it made sense that why LVMH would consider him for Louis Vuitton because they were just thinking of it from a purely mathematical equation. LVMH, LVMH men's is dead. We need somebody to rejuvenate it who has their finger on the pulse, who has the, who has the kind of, the finger on the, you know, who can kind of, anti, anti, what's a thing called? Antifis, emphasize whatever that word is called, the moment that's going on in culturally, right? Um, is tapped into the cultural zeitgeist, is able to talk to the people or talk to the kids who are basically buying the stuff at the moment and the best option the most obvious option was obviously a Virgil Abloh are there better more talented more kind of uh, high people that can execute on a high level than Virgil exists out there probably but are there people that can maybe execute to the level that he does in terms of volume in terms of output in terms of scale in terms of just thinking broadly about how to present brands probably not especially somebody that's tapped into what's going on nowadays in terms of the scene so for me it made complete sense even when it comes to Matthew Williams, that made sense too. And don't obviously be surprised too if you see Harry Preston end up kind of helming another big house very soon, I think, coming up in the cars if he doesn't decide to just knuckle down and keep doing his brand that he's got running at the moment, his namesake. But that was always the case. I thought always the case was always to make it that way you know obviously make your own brand direct to consumer and then hopefully use that brand as like a kind of calling card as a cv to show off what you can do in the hope that you can get that big grand prize that can legitimize you in the scene because everyone wants to be legitimized you want to be stamped you want to be approved by your peers you want to get that acknowledgement and then use that to kind of segue and continue on because basically as soon as you got as soon as you virtually got that job at lv he's cemented right his legacy is done in fashion he can do no wrong he's got a job for life he's completely he's completely done he's okay in that regard so i can definitely see that happen but i was just shocked why the fashion industry didn't understand why that wasn't that didn't make sense they just still had this idea that it's a it's a merit meritocracy in terms of like only the best designers design at the best houses and it's never been the case especially nowadays um no one cares about that at the moment people especially with the access of clothes that people have from high street clothes to you know stuff from random people's instagram pages and big cartel pages and stuff there's too much clothes out there at the moment so if you want people to go to your high fashion brand you need to create something you need to have a draw you need to have an appeal something there and if you can get somebody that's already got their appeal on a draw and you can give them the access to your willy wonka factory in terms of what virgil's got at Louis Vuitton, you know, you're going to hear at the park and so far so good. Just look at what John Vance has done at Flippin' Luebe, for instance. Come on, man. Um, so he continues here. It says, I think back in the day, if somebody co-signed you, it made a huge difference, said Kid Super Dylan. Um, now it's all about branding your own community. Uh, sorry, well, now it's all about building your own community. I understand agree with that. Making sure a co-sign doesn't even matter. The press was run by people who could open doors and close doors. Now the press is Instagram. Um, uh, da, 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 da. if you can build a real community for yourself that's more important than one article but back in the day one article could change your life exactly imagine a, imagine a um imagine if Kanye West would have done his collection now that he'd remember his first one at Paris Fashion Week I think that might have been like 2013 or something imagine he presented it nowadays I think the reception would be a far more forgiving because more of his fans would be ones responding and approving of what he does you know yeah it would be kind of deciding whether or not it's a yeah or a nay whereas back in 2013 there was still that kind of gatekeeper type thing where what was that woman called the Kathy Horns of this world if she writes a scathing review about your collection you're done you're out of here but nowadays the reviewer the person that's basically telling you whether or not what you're doing is good or valuable it or not are the paying customers does your stuff sell out is there, is there demand for it do they leave comments are they pestering you for this item do they want to see your new collection all this sort of kind of communication and feedback you're getting is the review this is the indication of whether or not you're going in the right direction or not not what the flipping um, editors say and more importantly what's shifting on the shop floor right you go to a shop floor you go to a rack say oh have you got this stuff in the size xl or larger in the popular sizes no it's all sold out okay accurately you can see that there's a demand for this item people are seeking it out in store and trying it on liking what it feels like in hand and then the to buy which is a big step similar to like having people come in to see you in an arena or in a gig somewhere right it, like selling out 300 capacity stadium place is still a better it's like in music same sort of thing it's much better to stay independent and sell out a 300 capacity venue somewhere in your local town 
continue consistently um you know especially album after album or ep after ep and then use the evidence to then present a record label and get better terms for yourself as opposed to going straight to record label getting that loan and then get locked in a shitty deal and then and then, and then you know and then again you go into you go to record label blank with nothing just just your talent you have no fan base so that if your records do flop there's no one to kind of cushion your fall if something goes wrong because if the virgil because i always argue if the virgil louis vuitton thing didn't go as well as it has done he st he's all right he's still got off-white he's still got all his collaborations he's okay do you know what i mean obviously it would be embarrassing and whatnot to see and whatnot but he's still got a career that he can kind of come back on and he's still got fans who can basically cushion his fall and say you know what fuck that we go again next time whereas if it was prior and he was someone who just came out fresh out of uni you do a bad job at one house that you that's your name kind of blacklisted and seen forever do you know what i mean it continues here it says i totally agree with com said Medingi. It's about um, community now. People are moving in a way where they're looking for a connection. They're looking for a tribe. And it doesn't necessarily have to be those who have media powers. At a click of a button, you literally have the opportunity to follow or unfollow people that you don't like, you like or dislike. Exactly. It's instant approval, instant dislike. In some ways, this is the focus of communities a long time coming. It's been the same feeling that designers are reported tapping into this time last year. And also United Designers highlighting our August issue. It's noble that cultivating community requires just as much work, if not more, than currying for the favour of an editor. And it always should i would much rather like i've always argued this that's why i hate the london scene for so many other reasons but one of the reasons why i hate it because at the time that i was coming up there was a real big concert there was a real big importance placed on sucking people's dicks in order to get to certain places and don't get me wrong there's certain people that i know certain friends of mine or, or acquaintances who have been able to use that to their advantage right you know to suck the right dicks or be in the right places pat the right people on the back be the right big friend to people and it helped them in their career and they are super successful now in what they're doing congrats but not everybody can do that and I don't think everyone should be required to do that. I think if you want to do that, you can, but everyone should be required to do that. What they should enforce is that if you want to be a success in whatever scene you're in, it's better you invest in your dreams, work hard in pursuing those things. Don't fake it until you make it. Actually try to make it, make the thing, ship the thing, sell the thing, produce the thing, put on the show, whatever it may be, and then use that as an opportunity to curry favor from the people that you want to get friends with. I'd, I'd much rather if I was, if I was flipping... Jonathan Ive, I'd much rather some kid come up to me in a lift somewhere at Ace Hotel and show me his store that he's designed chairs and furniture and, you know, stationery and whatnot. And he's selling this stuff and he wants to have some, bounce some ideas or maybe do an internship there, what he's doing. Then a guy just coming up, just trying to be my friend so he can hang around and get clout off me and then work as what? The front of house in my studio somewhere. That's not necessarily the exchange that I want. I want to basically inspire the next generation to kind of be better than me going forward that way. But it's always mostly the middle management people, the people that don't really call, the, the people that, aren't really the shot callers they're the ones that usually tell you to kind of whack people off and stuff because that's what they did to get their job but if you really want to be a creator you want to be a change maker you want to leave your little notch on a timeline of fashion or creative history or wherever you're from you have to just do the thing carrying favor and being you know the friends of people it can only get you so far in the end your work needs to be your work and i think that's something that people can never kind of um use as a stick to beat Virgil with yeah say whatever you want about his quality what he does if you like it or don't like it the fact of the matter is there's no one out there more prolific than him when it comes to just pure output he is creating on a level that's just insane the amount of stuff he does like look at his Instagram now he's suddenly now he's on tour he's, he's a DJ now do you know what I mean he's just doing shows recently now suddenly he's, he's gone into DJ mode he's been designing merch he's going to be doing fashion show Q&A's and whatnot soon another collection soon with um the LV dropping the Air Force Ones are going to be dropping very soon they're going to cultivate uh, you know there's be articles are written about those you know from from until the end of time now that they suddenly drop resale market is going to go in crazy that's because it just works hard and he produces quality what the people like simple as that although if, you know, obviously it helps that he's friends with kanye and all this sort of stuff he's got the right connections but at the same time he does the work he does the work it continues here. Um, it's notable. Duh, duh, duh. Now it seems fashion is in the midst of a, of a sea change, like the one that took place in rap music a few years ago when SoundCloud listeners become the bench barometer of stardom rather than the magic wand of Russell Simmons or Jay-Z. True. Um, but the young fashion followers are almost more fanatical than SoundCloud listeners. On Instagram, for example, a number of, the, of, of deep fashion comment accounts like I Deserve Couture duh, 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 or whatever that is have gained recognition over the past year for combining the almost religious fervor of Barb Twitter 
episode with the unsparing morality of Diet Prada. They are eager to prop up stars like Bianca Saunders and Christopher John, John Rogers, two other finalists of the prize. Um, da, 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 da. By the time the designers win something like the LVMH prize, they already built up a cult following and legion supporters making the prize monetary component perhaps the most valuable asset. If designers doesn't win it, they still can get their stands like um, Jose, Jose Corrales created a prayer circle on Twitter for Christopher John Rose on Monday night in hopes that it would make him home the grand prize. <clears throat> so amazing to see in some ways, Lager for the winners represent the three prongs of the contemporary fashion industry, um, the streetwear upstarts in Dylan, the independent-minded designers, designer in Mindengi, and the, entrepreneur, and the entrepreneurial Zhu or Zhou, is that it? Ho or Zhou, who has an intimate ab ambition for a brand that reaches far beyond the realms of fashion into the myriad of consumer products. It says, I can't stress the Dylan. I started with t-shirts and now, and no one would ar ar no one around me was doing fashion fashion. He said, his winning was a testament to breaking through as well as a testament to evolving, adding that when he started, he had no idea what a prize like this even, even existed. Yeah, that's probably the biggest one, Kid Super. Because if I remember him correctly, he did these like wacky all over print hoodies and tracksuits and shit. And I never really thought he was a fashion head. I just always assumed he was kind of like a like a I don't know like an only NY kind of thing right I, I, I don't know I just never assumed he was kind of one he wanted to get into the fashion realm but I guess in terms of in terms of a lucrative avenue and an avenue where he can maybe you know differentiate himself and kind of solidify himself as an artist more so it maybe made sense to kind of segue into the kind of fashion side of things and have very sort of you know look just look at this dress right have very kind of uh performative kind of performance art exhibitions and shows and whatnot yeah you know i mean he could easily do that in fashion scene more so maybe in the streetwear scene side of things but that's awesome to see he's even got his own footwear it looks like he's dabbling in there kipped super shoes nice to see and then to end here, it says, and Diggy points out the importance of staying to course, sounding a bit like Grace Boz Bonner or Marine Sa, the two designers. She says the following, being in this digital world, it's so easy to start comparing ourselves. It's a human thing, but for anyone to, to reach their full potential, you have to be who you are. It's just it's just about having that strong, steady sense of moving in a way that makes sense to you. And I 100% agree with that. But yeah, it's I'm glad to see the fashion world finally waking up to the idea that, you know, the to the realization that what Virgil Heron and Matthew Williams did by cultivating a fan base online, especially through Instagram via their own brands and just their Instagram platforms in general, is what eventually led to these big fashion houses deciding, hey, we need to back you guys. We need to put some money behind you. We need to basically give you the keys to our house because we want to tap into those same people because they're the ones that really invest in fashion. They're really buying the thing. Do you know what I mean? Not these critics that sit around on show studio, dissect everything, but don't buy anything in any kind of store because those guys get on my nerves. They're always critiquing and talking about shit, but it's like, like, what's the last piece of you know um, luxury fashion or high fashion that you actually purchase yourself everything that they get is always at cost or free and shit it's like you're not invested in it you're not a consumer you're not into this thing for the love like we are you're just here to be critical and hear the sound of your own voice you know what I mean but yeah congrats to this article um, and congrats to kind of solidifying what I've always thought so yeah congrats to me pat myself on the back cha-ching cha-ching <laughs>